This is Marius Konieczny, and I asked you guys to submit questions for Aduros management. So I submitted all the questions, and now I have Mina and Offer with me to uh, help me uh, answer these questions. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for having us, Marius. Yes, thanks for having us. Let's go ahead and get started then. Absolutely. So uh, I wanted to thank everybody that submitted questions. Ultimately, uh, we got uh, a ton of questions. We had to go through one by one and make sure that, you know, the ones that we could answer, some of them are too specific um, that we had to kind of skip over. Uh, a little bit too detailed on the technology side. Uh, you know, we ultimately share that level of detail under NDA with specific partners. Uh, but in this form, it would be a little bit inappropriate. To, to but we were impressed, you know, we were impressed with the, with the, with the level, you know, and, and, you know, the type of the questions that they made, actually, to be honest. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it tells me that your viewership and our shareholders that are currently looking at us are, are quite sophisticated and yeah. a pretty strong deep dive into what we've said and what competitors are saying and the space in general. So we were nonetheless quite impressed. Unfortunately, we're unable to answer those questions right now in this forum. Uh, having said that, um, you know, there's two categories of questions that I will call general questions uh, on the business side, uh, some status updates, and of course, a lot of questions around the Shell Game Changer announcement, uh, which we will dive into a little bit more. Uh, I'll start with the general questions, and I'll just tackle one by one here. So I'll read the question first. Um, number one. Can the company summarize the status of the three technologies they are working on, being HPU, uh, plastics, bitumen, and renewables, and indicate when these can be marketed? So I'll take a first stab at this question and I'll pass it on to Ofer. Um, the status update, we've always been clear that our primary focus has been on the plastic side and the bitumen side, right? With renewables being you know, advanced enough, but we're kind of putting it on the sidelines here until we get an appropriate partner that would want to take that to the next level, right? But our focal point, of course, is plastic and bitumen, uh, hence the, the two pilot units that we are about to commission uh, early next year uh, on the HPU side and HPU side, right? And when the question is asked, you know, what, when can these be marketed? Um, for clarity, they can be marketed today, right? Ultimately, we're marketing the technology, right? Uh, and building the commercial pipeline that we've been speaking about quite a bit. We've always said that our technology is a completely different approach and very much interest to a lot of different stakeholders. So we're doing that engagement or the stakeholder engagement as we speak on the bitumen side, on the plastic side, of course. And we are with the aim of creating this commercial pipeline by 2025 when we will have a commercial unit uh, ready to go. Uh, so saying that we would need to wait until then is not really accurate uh we want to work with the right partners side by side throughout the process right through the continuous flow and of course the tons per day uh pilot and then subsequently the commercial unit uh any other comment uh, over on that no i think this is a good summary i think what we the public uh, we always said that we will only uh, discuss uh, those agreements that are out and we'll you know avoid the agreement that are in the discussions or anything that you know in, in that is not materialized the hpu is ready the uh, flash drum is ready the uh, we're now building the finishing the the bitumen unit so absolutely ready for business uh for next year great great way to finish the year and to start the new year Great. And to add to that, you know, in terms of engagement, we've never had a higher level of engagement with stakeholders uh, in our history. You know, the last time we mentioned this number, we mentioned around 12 to 15 engagements or discussions. I mean, that number has, has gone well beyond that. Um, and when I say engagement, I'm talking about some early scale discussions and, of course, some quite developed discussions uh, that are quite significant in our in our books. But we will announce everything when they become material in uh, formally announceable um i'll jump on to the next question and i'll maybe pivot back and forth between number one and two here so on what time frame does the company expect additional customer trials revenue from r2 right so that kind of really speaks to what i mean um in terms of acceleration ultimately the r2 units are going to be our demonstration pilots so when i say we're in discussions with a significant number of potential stakeholders, uh, customers, uh, suppliers, vendors, uh, everything you know in those categories, 
you know, the early stage discussions are more in line with, you know, we'd love to come and see you when R2 is ready. We'll come and visit the lab. We'll do a demonstration and we'll start discussing next steps, right? So that is what I call an early discussion. People waiting on the sideline for R2. So in my opinion, R2 is going to accelerate a lot of that engagement, right? A lot of people have been waiting for it, ourselves as well included. Uh, but that's not slowing down the discussions that we've been having you know, since you know, throughout this year in 2022, those discussions keep on becoming very fruitful. And I think, you know, with R2 being up and running in commission, it should accelerate a lot of that engagement. Uh, but the revenue is going to be derived from the feedstock trials or partner engagement, not from the R2 unit itself. The R2 unit is going to be a demonstration pilot, um, potentially generating some revenue, but we're not expecting to be it's not going to be a profitable unit. It's going to be break even uh, as we as we plan for it right now. Sorry, go ahead, Ofer. Anything to add on that front? No, I, I think it's complete, basically. Quite a lot of interest. Uh, stay disciplined to the one that, we, you know, are coming out. It's an opportunity for us to come and, and show it to, to organizations. So we do expect that to come in next year. Great. And, and you know what? Like, I think, matters when we had our first discussion early on, maybe a few months ago, we clearly stated that these discussions that we're having in, on the technology front is not pending, you know, R2, right? Uh, yeah. Some of the earlier discussions want to start engagement with R2. That is completely clear. <clears throat> but the discussions that we've been having, like, for example, Shell Game Changer, uh, that was occurring around the technology, not around specifically triggered by uh, the pilot being complete and, and running material. So we've always been clear that the world is absolutely looking for a solution to this plastic problem. And the fact that we can get engagement from the likes of Shell Game Changer, you know, one of the top chemical companies, uh, well, Shell being one of the top chemical companies in the world, uh, you know, that is a major milestone for us, right? And we, I think there were some doubters that expected that we would have to get to a certain stage before we could actually start working with potential uh, industry partners. Uh, we've proved that not to be the case, right? And And hence why, I think it's a very proud moment for us to have an engagement on the, the plastic side and an engagement on the bitumen side uh, before even commissioning the R2 units. If the world had a already good existing solution, I don't think you would have gotten an engagement like this. That's a, a conclusion that you can make. But I mean, ultimately speaking, there's a lot of solutions out there, but the problem is so immense. Right, right now we're talking about six to nine percent of plastic being recycled, alongside all the current solutions. We call them legacy solutions. Right, uh, we're a complete departure from those technologies. But even with everything available, whether it's uh, you know the best uh, profitable, the best economically viable uh, solution, the best uh, you know best on, on energy or emissions, that is something that we're going to start showing. But ultimately, what I'm trying to say is it's not a binary decision right it's not like we're going to use a duro uh versus something else this the demand is so high that a company like shell or any of any companies of that scale the demand that they have for recycled material is probably sufficient for you know i i, I guess the hundreds of aduros right so although our ultimate goal is to become the, the next gold standard in the marketplace and that is our our goal and we're not really backing down from that statement it's going to take time, right? But taking even a, a bite out of the current market share, uh, we're talking about a very, very significant number. We should remind people that we, we're working now in Mexico and we're working now as well in the Netherlands. And, you know, there is uh, discussions um, pretty much across uh, globe. So even, if, even though that the units are not ready, there is definitely an interest in the technology and that allows us to make business decisions and, and to expand our discussions outside of, you know, our, our home in Canada. I mean, that, that speaks to something, I guess, when you're thinking about the technology's level of interest. And on the other hand, that also speaks to the size of the market. There's just plenty out there that you can do. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and I'll give some, I'll give you guys just a, um... A statistic that I looked at just recently, uh, you know, right now there's around 380 million tons of plastic being produced on an annual basis, right? And I said six to nine percent of that is recycled. Of course, there's debate on, you know, is it closer to six or nine? 
Yeah, go uh, figure, go go prove it, right? It's a nice yeah. Number. I think it's ultimately I think it's closer to the lower end of that range. It's a tough number, yeah. But that number is expected to double more than double in the next fifteen years, right? So we're talking about almost 700, 800 million uh, tons per year of production, and we're not even uh, making a dent on the, the current production or the current yeah. waste that's out there. So this this problem has a very look. There, we're just starting on the ground floor of traction uh, in this industry. Uh, there's a lot of pivoting uh, throughout the companies that are really focusing on chemical recycling and us being uh, you know, a solution to that. And we think a gold standard solution as we try to scale this um, and, and work through a commercial unit, uh, we're in a fantastic spot. I don't think there's a better industry uh, or time to be in this industry than today. Apart from the patents, are there any precautions to protect the technical knowledge from being copied or stolen? Uh, historically, we've gotten a lot of questions around patents, and um, we've answered the question several times in the past. I'll let Ofer take another step to remind everybody that the patent is one piece of the puzzle, right? The internal know-how and expertise that we have uh, within our lab is a significant barrier to entry. Um, you know, anybody trying to start this from the get-go would need to acquire a lot of knowledge, right? Beyond just us having protection from our patents, but I'll pass it on to Ofer for final comments on this. Uh, it's easy to focus on the patent. Patents and enable you, allow you to to practice your art. And, and for that reason, I guess I, I could understand the question, but you are absolutely right. Um, applying uh, our know-how, uh, there's more into this than just, uh, just the patent. And if you re will read our patents, I'll, I'll argue that you don't, you, you, you wouldn't know how to even to start this thing and to operate it. Uh, but uh, smart people are always there and uh, we have to be careful. And we're doing, um, we're investing a lot of resources in patent development and in patent protection. And now we're, we're presenting the technology and we've been talking about technology for, for this is the second year, I guess. And so um, Aduro as a company are investing a lot of time in active research, in proactive, uh, just for you to know. So we kind of are uh, building and working to build our fence uh, all day long, just expanding it all day long. So, you know, saying all that, there's always, you should always be careful and, and you know, from, from say, stating something like it's indefensible and, and, you know, nobody else can do things it's just a reality that you have to work through the motion and do those things and keep on leading uh in in our space yeah absolutely so we're we're always trying to be 10 steps ahead of anybody that would be aware of what's out there right now in yeah. terms of our patents and our disclosures we're already working on you and you uh security measures around the patent protection uh, and there's new, there's development there's stuff that goes around us that we see so uh, you know us doing what we've been doing uh give us an understanding to you know think of it people anyone else will have to kind of study a little bit of what we're doing in order to even to start it so there's a, a little bit of ahead of the curve uh, for us which is working in our advantage i'll say absolutely moving on to the next question uh did the company expedite the recently exercised warrants if not were they exercised early by the holders? So the answer is no, we did not accelerate uh, or expedite the warrant expiry. Ultimately, the trigger for that is 10 consecutive days, closing price of a dollar or higher. We have not met that threshold. I think we, the, the, the highest number we received is basically five days above a dollar, um, but we don't have that trigger yet. Ultimately, we would consider it uh, once we hit it. The option, the the warrants that have been coming in to date have all been voluntary, um, and there's been a significant amount of warrants that we've disclosed in the prior quarter, and they continue to come in. So uh, I, I think our shareholders are very much engaged in the story and very much uh, seeing that it's quite de-risked with the recent announcements that we've done. Uh, so I think they're happy to exercise before, actually significantly before uh, the uh, the expiry. So we're quite happy uh, to get that, uh, you know, those the, those funds in. Uh, but beyond that, we we appreciate the support and the confidence that we have from our shareholders. I'll move on to the next question. Um, this is a pretty long question, so I'm just going to reword it a little bit. The, the question is around one of the milestone B triggers, right? 
uh, one of the, the six or seven criteria is having a third party enter into an agreement to acquire uh, a duro. They issued an outstanding shares of a duro at a price of $3 plus. And I guess this individual is asking, um, so is this something that a duro is willing to pursue or is that milestone outdated? Ultimately, these milestones are the triggers to the milestone were developed at the RTO stage, right? So it was one out of six, seven uh, different milestones. These are set in stone. It's not something that we can change. So this trigger is a valid trigger. If the question is asking whether we would accept an offer of $3 uh, for the company, uh, I can speak on my behalf and on Ofer's behalf because we've had this discussion before. Uh, ultimately, we would not accept this. It would have to go to a shareholder vote, uh, but Ofer being the biggest shareholder in the company, uh, I don't see it passing without um, us being online. And, you know, that would be very premature for us to to say that, that we would uh, sell the company for $3 a share. Uh, it's very early days in terms of us maximizing the value in the market cap of the company. Uh, as I depicted, there's every day there's more significant and aggressive targets from the industry. And the industry is being addressed you know, our addressable market is, you know, so large and what's being addressed today is less than a, a tiny percent, right? So I, um, we are ultimately fully committed to seeing this through and developing this into a legacy company. So uh, yeah, short answer is no, we would not accept that offer, but it would have to go to a shareholder vote nonetheless. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, can the company elaborate more on the insert my tax grant recently announced and are they working on additional grant applications so uh i'll let Ofer get into this one but ultimately i, I want to say you know I, I think the market did not fully grasp the value that we get out of this uh funding i mean outside of the monetary aspect of getting 1.15 million dollars uh in non-diluted funding from the provincial and, and federal government entities um the the hoops that every company has to go through to get federal or provincial money, they're quite significant, right? These, these organizations do a lot of diligence uh, before they allocate and approve funds. So, you know, it's a very, very major vote of confidence. But more important than that, I think, is working with Western University and having handpicking these 18 individuals that were going to work on the project, on the research project, uh, that is a major asset for us down the line, right? So chemical engineers or even chemical scientists or specialists in the space, they're not easy to come by, right? And it's even harder for us because we're we're not a legacy approach. We're actually an innovative new approach uh, that you know these individuals would have would not have heard of in the past. So having people working on these projects alongside the Aduro team is an invaluable resource for us down the line. And beyond just that, you know, these individuals market value would be worth triple or four times what they would be getting through the university, right? So the value to us is is multiples of that 1.15, right? And I think in the past, I've gotten this question, it's not right here, but this question around, is this research part of our plan? 100%. This research was part of our game plan in the next uh, year or two. Um, so this is very much taking off uh, some pressure in terms of funding from our end and a significant amount, as I described it, that if we were to pursue this on our own, it would probably cost us three, four times that much money to get all that manpower and selection of top talent that would be working for the university uh, and not really be interested in working for like, a, you know, a, a company at this stage. But there are for sure a future pool for us to essentially um, take advantage of when the time is right. And we're growing our team left, right and center. So this is really a, a very important strategic um aspect for us uh, that i want to underline uh Ofer, please go ahead i can add to this that um you know the the access to the the you know the, the laboratory the access to the technologies available there to the analytical tools the access it's it's priceless for us the fact that we are, have been working with the university means that we already know how to uh, operate and you know maneuver within university that's only uh, uh you know enhancing everything that we've we've been doing 
Um, with respect to yes, no, if this is necessary, uh, I'd like to add that uh, you know we are in such a dynamic move that we knew that it's possible that they will not, uh, we will not be accepted, and this this grant will not be accepted. So we will do it ourselves. But us uh, being under march in order to continue and develop the technology as much as we can, uh, we knew that it's worthwhile to take the time and build this this program forward. And um, here we are with, with uh, a possible of 18 more uh, young uh, uh, future doers and employees that could come. Uh, and we're getting responses to this, just to give to give an idea. It's actually all helping a little bit even to the investors. We're getting uh, responses and applications worldwide from young researchers that are interested to come uh, and work, uh, suddenly relocate and work in, in London, Ontario. Uh, with Aduro, so it's it's really really exciting uh, to see that type of drive coming in, and so I, I mean Aduro is benefiting uh, beyond the, the monetary. I mean left, right, and center from this. All of us are, are benefiting from this. Great, and I think the second part of the question is: Are they working on additional grant applications? Absolutely, we've made it very clear to investor base that we want to be cognizant of dilution at every front. Uh, beyond our own incentive of being shareholders, of course, we want to be diligent that we raise the right money from the right people at the right time and at the right price. But we want to subsidize all of that with as many non-dilutive funding as we possibly can. And I want to be clear that the organizations that would be funding a uh, an R2 unit or a research or a semi-commercial unit, these are different organizations, right? At every stage, of our evolution towards commercialization, uh, we're working with different organizations. Sometimes there's an overlap, you know, ones that would be interested in multiple uh, of these stages, but we're absolutely working today on the next stage and the one after that as well. Uh, and these grant applications, these are not like weeks, you know, they take months uh, to get to a conclusion and it's pretty intensive from a resource standpoint, uh, but we have the best people uh, on our end, working on these applications, so we're we're very confident that we will continue to get non-dilutive funding from these uh, from these programs and others, of course. I know that uh, we're going to address uh, the shell game changer questions, but I was wondering, since we're on the grant uh, topic here, uh, mm -hmm. being accepted into the shell game changer program, does this open up any more opportunities for grants for you? Uh, not necessarily. It doesn't really link to that. I think the technology itself in the space, there's tremendous pressure from governments around the world and uh, non-profit uh, non organizations uh, towards this upward trend of uh, net zero. You know, everybody has a net zero goal, uh, trying to do more on the renewable side, uh, emissions reduction. So that pressure is creating an environment that is very healthy for companies in our space. Um, of course, being associated with a company like uh, Shell in any capacity, being one of the top chemical companies, uh, is a major advantage, right? It, it provides a, a validation that we've gone through their checklist and their due diligence and their process that was quite intensive uh, and got in some support. But whether there's a direct link, no, but indirect, absolutely. I think traction-wise, we've been very successful so far, which gives me the confidence that we will continue to uh, to become successful on on those goals, right? Yes. Yeah, so Encirc in particular, this is the second time. So just to, to people understand, we had a three years program with Encirc uh, before that program uh, already. Uh, so this is the second time that they see us. Uh, so it, it's a it's great. I mean, I and I think it's the largest project. It was announced in the university. It was well announced at the university in Tel it, It's it's a very large project for NSEC, for the government to pay that type of money for companies in that type of, of grant, particular grant. Great. So uh, we're moving on to the next stage. I think we those that was the last on the general question side. The next <clears throat> category of questions are all around Shell Game Changer. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of converted the questions that we got into different categories uh, just for ease of uh, discussion. I just want to caveat everything here by saying, you know, we're under uh, the agreement with Shell Game Changer is confidential, right? Um, everything that's in the news release was essentially approved and vetted by Shell Game Changer, and we can't really divulge anything that's not in that news release. So I I, I apologize up front. That is the reason why you know the the funding amount is not announced. Certain specific elements are not announced. 
but we'll try to give as much color as we possibly can. But please keep that in mind. Uh, company, this is very appropriate for a company like Shell. Um, so this is what to be expected. And of course, if we were to engage another company of this caliber, it would probably be a similar uh, confidential agreement. So I'll, I'll jump to the first category here. Um, what are the program conditions and what was the process like? So the conditions, of course, I will refer you to the, Gelch, the Shell Game Changer uh, website to see what the criteria is. They ultimately focus on innovative companies in the space um, and have a very robust process. Uh, I would let Ofer, of course, describe that process from his point of view. All I can say, it is uh, rigorous. Uh, I mean, they know what they do, and there, there is a bunch of professionals that are looking at, uh, you know, uh, the whole landscape and then compare you against it. So that, that's that's the obvious. And we had to protect that. But there was no change in the story for the investors than the story that we told Shell. And so that, that's that's also fair to say. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I, you know, it... it uh, um, you know, for us, of course, we're super excited to go in and, and engage and uh, uh, move on through the milestones. But I, we cannot talk any more than that about it. It's we have to stay uh, very limited in our description for you know our work with Shell at this point of time. Very reasonable. Uh, and I, I want to add something. I'd like to encourage uh, the viewers to look at Shell Game Changer and Shell as a whole as a company. Uh, they are subject matter expert. I mean, they are a very large, their, their chemical uh, side of the business is very, very large, right, uh, globally. And they are subject matter expert in the traditional legacy technologies, more specifically uh, paralysis, right? So, you know, read between the lines or do what you may, but ultimately uh, we're pitching to a company that is very much aware of the industry and the landscape and existing technologies. And we were, we passed through all their checklists, which is, nonetheless quite robust and intense it wasn't um, easy it was of course not easy for sure it's so you know i can't say more than that but ultimately it's very different when we're saying that we've engaged a a small scale company that is producing you know 40 tons of waste and they're looking for a solution they might not be fully aware of every option out there and they might be seeing our solution as we're pitching it appealing but when we're presenting to to shell uh, ultimately, that comes with a whole different level of of, uh, of understanding of the industry. So, you know, if if they didn't find this appealing, they would have told us right away, and we would not be accepted in the program. Right. Uh, beyond that, I also encourage you to see the goals that Shell have put for themselves as a company uh, in terms of recycling uh, waste plastic. Uh, they put a goal of a million tons uh, per year by 2025. They want to be net zero by 2050. Uh, they've made additional aggressive goals on the emission reduction side of the business. Uh, and I'm not making in any way a link between those goals and, and our in the company, but I'm trying to really underline the fact that Shell it has really robust, significant goals in the space. So their involvement with Aduro through Shell Game Changer is not only because we're innovative and we we met we meet all their uh, you know their check marks. But as well, I think there's there's a, a link to the industries that they're in as well. So I'll move on to the next stage here. Uh, mm -hmm. Why was Aduro or their technology appealing to Shell? Um, I don't know if we really want to get into detail on that, but ultimately, I have kind of we've kind of answered that question in the first part. And, uh, and we don't want to speak uh, on behalf of Shell uh, as well. I mean, we want to speak on behalf of us, and you know, and uh, I'll refer you again to to the story that we to the story that we told investors and from the early days this is the same okay there is a, a level of details that comes in when we protect it again you know for shell but it's pretty much the same story and, and i think that the following two questions are a lot of questions around what are the commitments by shell and aduro all i can say right now is from aduro standpoint it's a 12-month project with six phases each phase has specific milestones that drive the corresponding funding, right? So uh, Shell is very big on, on stage gates. You know, you got a first milestone checked, you go on to the next, on to the next, on to the next, right? Commitments by Shell, of course, is what's in the news release. There's uh, some non-dilutive funding that has been approved uh, to go towards these milestones as we execute. And of course, the technical support uh, that they will be offering uh, alongside that, which is very significant. I can't undermine 
uh, underline it enough, the fact that we have a, a, a stakeholder like Shell that will be working with us on this project is, is quite significant uh, from our standpoint. They've been extremely professional, um, extremely positive working with the teams uh, across both sides. So we're very happy uh, to be at this at this stage. The last question here on, on the Shell Game Changer aspect is what happens after the program? But what I can say is there's language around subsequent stages post the 12 month projects. So there's verbiage that dictate what happens next. But of course, confidentially, we can't really say much about it. Uh, but it's a robust agreement, right? That goes just beyond, um, you know, what we have at the 12 month program. Uh, but back to what I said, you, we got to pass each gate to go to the next. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to provide um, some updates along the line as we uh, go down this path. Uh, that is the last question really on the Shell Game Changer. Uh, I think we uh, we went a little bit over on the timeline here, but uh, I'll pass it back to Mariusz if he has any questions that, that he wants to ask or do we want to go back to any of these uh, topics uh, or else we can just move on to a conclusion here. Yeah, so thank you guys for doing this. Uh, and thank you for all of you that submitted the questions. I know that there were more questions, but that's why they were submitted to make sure that um, only the appropriate ones uh, will be asked not to get any of us in in trouble uh, here. So uh, with that being said, uh, do you we, guys we do, Mario, have answers to all of the technical questions. Just the, none of them came in surprise. It's the level of details came in surprise, but just to, to reassure the, the the audience that uh, you know we're very much aware um, of the information that is related in those questions, but yeah, we we could not answer. It's not appropriate. That, that's fair enough. So, um, do you guys have any uh, final remarks about you know what investors can expect uh, for the remainder of this year, and then what they can look forward to in 2023? Absolutely. I just wanted to thank everybody that is uh, listening to this video. Everybody that submitted questions, uh, we thank you for the, the level of the support and diligence that you're putting around the story. Uh, we're in a very enviable position in terms of our shareholder base, right? We're very lucky to have the shareholders that we do have uh, that are really interested in the story and, and the evolution of the story and the space, uh, more importantly. Um, I'd like to go at a high level and say that this year has been a tremendous year for Enduro. Uh, operationally, we could not be happier, right? Uh, we had a lot of different, uh, I guess, milestones that we wanted to conclude the year on or start 2023 on. Uh, we wanted the, the two R2 units to be commissioned by early 2023. We want our lab or expanded lab in uh, London, Ontario to be complete. These to me are the, the three major pillars uh, that we start the year on uh, that will help us accelerate on everything that we've been talking in terms of stakeholder engagement, right? So these are a lot easier said than done. I, I got to say the team has been working around the clock trying to get this done uh, in the timeline that we've put for ourselves. And we've been impressed at every single stage. Uh, we have one of the best teams uh, across the board. I want to say the dedication is, is un you know, is unparalleled, right, compared to everything that I've seen uh, in my experience. So we're, we're very uh, lucky to have a team like this. Um, beyond that, I think just executing on the NSERC MyTax grant, showing that we're, we're actively working on non-dilutive funding uh, to be able to bring to fruition and, and actually announce uh, Shell Game Changer and uh, the LOI with Prospera on the bitumen side and, and the plastic side. Uh, to me, we're, we're finishing the year on, a, on an extremely high note, and that is going to be our new base. We want 2023 to be significantly even more impressive, right? And I think we very much on our way to do that with the, the pillars that I stated uh, to start the 2023 year on, which would be the lab and the, the commissioning of the, the two R2s and the flash drum. With that, I I'll leave the final words to Ofer if, if he wants to add anything. I'm just, I mean, you summarized so well. First, I'd like to apologize for the exciting dog that is out there for the audience. But uh, to say, uh, really, what a, what a way to finish uh, 2022 with this dedication and completion of those units. And uh, really, what a way to open uh, 2023 with, you know, those availabilities that we gain to the company. 
and us allowing now to come out and, and uh, really sell the, the, the business and, uh, you know, uh, be open for business and, and uh, run engagement and testing and projects and uh, whatever we, we could, uh, uh, you know, we pursue. All right, perfect. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Marius. Always a pleasure as usual. Thank you, Marius. Thanks, thanks everyone.